Hi, welcome back to our MOOC on Snarks. My name is Dong Song. In this segment, I will talk about an example application of Snarks called ZK Bridge, Trustless Bridge Made Practical. Today, the blockchain space has become a fast-growing multi-chain universe where many different blockchains coexist and support different applications built on top. Cross-chain bridges provide an important foundation for this multi-chain universe and provide generic and efficient communications across blockchains. The core functionality of a bridge is pretty simple. It allows a smart contracts on the receiver chain to get information about the latest state from the center chain and uh, get needed information to support certain applications such as token swaps, uh, uh, token exchanges, and so on. Ideally, uh, bridges should satisfy a set of desirable properties. First, uh, it needs to be general and be able to support many different types of applications. Second, it needs to be efficient. And third, and uh, most importantly, it needs to be secure and ideally with minimum trust. So first, let's look at how uh, the most common bridge approaches work today. Today, most of the bridges function relying on intermediaries. These intermediaries include, for example, side chains, a bridge committee, or external oracles. In this case, the uh, nodes operating the bridges send assigned messages assigned by these nodes to, uh, uh, to the receiver chain about state updates uh, from the sender chain. The advantage of this approach is that it's simple and supports efficient on-chain verification. For example, the on-chain smart contract uh, corresponding to the bridge only needs to verify a simple multisig, uh, for example. And the disadvantage of uh, this approach is that it needs to rely on external trust on intermediaries. For example, with the approach of using a sidechain to operate the bridge, it requires uh, trusting that at least two thirds of the validators in the sidechain are honest. And with the approach that uses a bridge committee, it requires a trust assumption that at least two thirds of the bridge committee are honest. And with the approach of using external oracles such as in layer zero, it requires a trust assumption and that the Oracle and Relayer are independent. Bridge security is extremely important. In just the last 18 months, we have seen attacks on these cross-chain bridges that have stolen assets of worth $2 billion. And in these examples, here, for example, for Harmony and Ronan uh, bridge attacks, the attacks were caused by attackers stealing secret keys of the bridge uh, validators and operators. And for example, in the Ronan's case, the Ronan bridge case, attackers were able to steal private keys uh, from five out of nine uh, committee members from the Ronan Bridge. And together between the Harmony and Ronan Bridge attacks, the uh, attackers were able to steal assets worth uh, of over $700 million. So these examples indicate that it's really important for us to reduce the trust assumptions on external intermediaries uh, for uh, improving bridge security. So the question is, how can we remove trust on these intermediaries to build more secure bridges? So the idea is that instead of relying on these bridge operators 
to sign messages about state uh, uh, about center chain state updates and information needed for um, the uh, certain uh, application on the bridge. Instead, the for the receiver chain side, the receiver chain should directly verify, ideally, the state transitions uh, in the center chain. So this is very related to the notion of like client, in particular, like client verification. So in a like client uh, verification, in contrast to full node verification, which verifies all transactions committed in a blockchain and verify the state transitions with these uh, transactions, a like client verification only uh, verifies certain correctness properties of the state transitions in the consensus protocol using block header information, in particular to ensure that the block headers in the chain are correct. And these like line verifications vary depending on the consensus protocol of different blockchains. So for example, uh, for Cosmos and uh, BFT-based consensus, a like line needs to verify the validator signatures and also keep track of validator rotations. So uh, one idea of removing trust on external intermediaries to build uh, more secure bridges is to essentially utilize like client verification. So for example, with Cosmos IBC, which is a protocol for uh, bridges across Cosmos uh, blockchains, here, the validators in the receiver chain will verify block header information of the sender chain by performing like client verification of the sender chain. So again, the advantage of this approach is that the receiver chain now does not need to rely on trust on external intermediaries to know the uh, to verify the state uh, transitions and the latest state information of the sender chain because it performs the like client verification uh, itself of uh, the sender chain. But however, the disadvantage of this approach is that it essentially requires the receiver chain in this case to implement the IPC client uh, to be able to perform this like client verification. And not every chain supports uh, such functionality. For example, Ethereum does not support this and hence uh, currently Ethereum cannot uh, integrate and utilize the Cosmos IPC. Another approach is that one can implement this like client verification directly in a smart contract as long as the chain supports a smart contract. For example, in the near Rainbow Bridge, it implements the like client verification at a smart contract in Ethereum. The advantage of this approach is that this approach can uh, be applied as long as the receiver chain in this case supports smart contracts. But however, the disadvantage of this approach is that on-chain verification can be very expensive. It essentially can be prohibitively expensive. For example, uh, in the uh, near Rainbow Bridge case, uh, this on-chain verification of uh, like client in the smart contract on Ethereum is extremely expensive. So how can we actually do better? How can we achieve uh, both goals? We want to remove trust on external intermediaries to build a more secure bridge, but also at the same time, we want uh, this approach to be practical, to be very efficient, and in particular, to enable efficient on-chain verification and um, uh, be applicable to uh, all smart contract platforms or blockchains that support smart contracts, ideally. So in, uh, in our recent work, uh, Kazuki Bridge, we utilize uh, succinct proofs and replace honesty assumptions with cryptographic assurance and support efficient on-chain verification utilizing succinct proofs. 
So at a high level, how does Zeki Bridge work? So here we have the center chain, which has a, a, a chain of blocks with block headers HT, HT plus one, and so on. And we have a receiver chain. And on the receiver chain, we have a smart contract that we call update your contract. So in the CK bridge setting, we have uh, off chain uh, block header relayers. And this block header relayer uh, essentially observes uh, the center chain as the center chain grows its blocks. The block header relayers will relay the latest block header information to the receiver chain, sending it to the update your contract. And also in this case, uh, the block header relayer doesn't just send the block header information, uh, HT plus one. In addition, it will also provide a succinct proof that the this latest block header, HT plus one, is correct. And uh, this essentially uh, perform is, uh, the uh, like line verification and is consensus protocol specific as we uh, mentioned earlier. And thus, in the ZK Bridge case, this block header relayer uh, relays the latest block header information, for example, HT plus one and so on. In addition, it will also attach a proof here, proof pi, proving that HT plus one is correct, given the past uh, block header information and so on. And um, now the update your contract as it receives the uh, latest block header uh, information, HT plus one, and also they attach the proof. It will verify that the proof is correct. And uh, if the proof is correct, it will receive it, re it will accept the latest uh, block header HT plus one as the uh, the latest block header information to update uh, the data structure in the updater contract. So this together forms what we call the base layer of the zk bridge, and on top of the zk bridge, uh, developers can build application contracts utilizing. Uh, the um, uh, the the block the latest block header information, and essentially uh, utilize information from the ZK bridge. There are a number of advantages of the ZK bridge approach. First, it's built on minimized trust. With ZK bridge, no uh, external trust um, external intermediaries is needed and it utilizes cryptographic soundness instead of honest assumptions. Second, it provides efficient on-chain verification. In particular, with ZK Bridge, it provides purpose-built ZK SNARK approaches to enable efficient on-chain verification. And with ZK Bridge, it's truly permissionless and decentralized because uh, there's no trust on the provers and the blockhead relayers Anyone can uh, be a, a block header relayer, and hence, uh, with the ZK Bridge, it is fully permissionless and decentralized. And also with ZK Bridge, it's extensible and universal. Developers can develop their own applications on top of a ZK Bridge, and the ZK Bridge uh, has full extensibility and supports a broad range of different applications. So with the ZK Bridge approach, there are also certain challenges. In particular, as we have learned that SNARKs can be uh, very expensive uh, for both uh, for, for the prover side. And also many blockchains are now designed to be ZK friendly. For example, certain signature schemes used in blockchain consensus protocols, uh, such as EDDSAs, uh, signatures and so on uh, can be expensive to express as an arithmetic circuit and hence make the um, ZK bridge circuit 
uh, very large. And furthermore, each state transition could uh, require uh, hundreds of uh, signature verification depending on the consensus protocol. And thus, for actually providing uh, and generating the proof pi, uh, can uh, naively, and this can be prohibitively expensive. So how can we actually make Zigbee Bridge practical? In our approach, we have developed new uh, ZKP technologies to uh, make it more efficient uh, to provide uh, the ZK Bridge uh, proof uh, generation in an efficient and parallel fashion. So in particular, um, in ZK Bridge's case, we have developed a distributed version uh, of our earlier ZKP protocol called Virgo. So the distributed version is called DVirgo, which exploits data parallelism uh, since, for example, in uh, these uh, proof uh, uh, circuits, uh, in, in many of these proof circuits for ZK Bridge, depending on the consensus protocol, it uh, has uh, it needs to verify, for example, multiple signatures, and this uh, essentially can be uh, done in a, a parallel uh, in a parallel fashion with uh, essentially identical circuits. And with the Virgo, it enables optimal parallelization uh, in the case that it provides a linear speed up. Uh, for uh, as we increase the number of machines uh, for uh, verifying uh, these uh, sub-circuits in parallel, exploiting the data parallelism. And also it provides practical communication um, so that uh, the communication overhead is, uh, is reasonable. And uh, furthermore, by using proof recursion, we can run a Diverco verifier in GRAS 16 as a proof recursion uh, that you have learned earlier, uh, for example. And this way, we can reduce the proof size um, using proof recursion. And we can perform further optimization by batching um, proofs of these block headers, uh, of multiple block headers in one proof. And this can uh, save a further uh, on-chain verification cost. And thus, uh, we combine the best of both worlds. So with the Virgo, it enables fast proof generation, and even though it has a relatively uh, big proof, and GRAS 16, which has slower proof generation, but has fast and in particular constant approved size and verification. By combining these two using proof recursion, we achieve constant size uh, proofs and uh, a verification with only a slight increase in prover time. And thus, uh, with the ZK bridge, we enable uh, the uh, this layered, uh, um, this two layer proof composition. So with layer one, we do we use the Virgo uh, prover to do distributed proof generation across uh, different machines, and hence being able to handle and generate proofs for really large scale uh, circuits. And then in layer two, using a uh, a proof recursion and proof composition, we uh, combine the uh, Divergo verifier. Uh, we run that in uh, the GRAS 16 uh, 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 prover. And we, uh, in this case, we can then generate a constant size, a small proof. And finally, uh, this final uh, general proof uh, can be verified on-chain 
with the graph 16 verifier, uh, which enable uh, fast uh, verification and has e enable efficient on-chain verification for ZK Bridge. And in our experiments, it also demonstrates the uh, efficiency and effectiveness of this approach. For more information, you can check out our paper on zkbridge.org. So with ZK Bridge, it provides an important base layer for cross-chain communication. So again, with this base layer, the block header relay nodes relays the latest block header information from the sender chain to the receiver chain, and together with the attached proof that can be verified by the updater contract. So the updater contract in this case can expose an API for applications built on top of ZK Bridge to learn the latest state of the sender chain. And by utilizing this uh, API from the updated contract, developers now have the freedom and the flexibility to build uh, different applications uh, and deploy them as application contracts on the sender chain and the receiver chain. And thus, using this approach, ZK Bridge can provide full extensibility. Here are some examples of uh, common bridge applications that one can easily build on top of ZK Bridge, including message passing, cross-chain assets transfer and swap, and uh, for example, cross-chain NFT interop uh, interoperations and so on. So here, let's look at uh, a concrete example uh, how one can build applications on top of the ZK Bridge, essentially in what we call the application layer. So in this case, for example, a user U may want to use an application um, that's built on top of the ZK Bridge uh, that needs to operate cross-chain between the sender chain and the receiver chain. And in this case, the application will deploy smart contracts uh, on both the sender chain and the receiver chain in this case. And let's look at a concrete example of message passing. So in this case, the user wants to use the application for passing a message from a sender chain to the receiver chain. And also in this case, uh, the application has two smart contracts deployed on, on the two blockchains. It has the, the send contract deployed on the sender chain and the verify contract deployed on the receiver chain. And the send and verify contract in this case uh, with the application essentially provide a message passing service that the application other applications can use uh, as well. So how does uh, the flow uh, work for this uh, application? So let's uh, go through uh, the example flow. So here the application sends wants uh, to send uh, message M in this case, from the sender chain to the receiver chain. So first the, uh, uh, the application sends message M to the send contracts on the sender chain. And uh, as the message M gets committed on the sender chain, the block header really knows, now relays the latest block header uh, with the proofs uh, to the update contracts uh, of the receiver chain uh, as uh, as uh, uh, as uh, done in the uh, base layer of the ZK bridge. And the updated contract now uh, can verify uh, the block header uh, related from the relay 
uh, nodes uh, with the attached proof and can accept uh, the latest block header information. And now uh, the application can call the verify contract with message M and uh, the Merkle proof that the message M is committed uh, in uh, as one of the uh, transactions in the block. And this information can, uh, and this, uh, and then the verify contract can now receive the block header uh, information uh, from the updater contract. And uh, it can uh, also uh, verify the Merkle proof uh, that the message M is uh, correctly uh, committed uh, in the block. Uh, with the given block header information. And upon verification, uh, this message M then is made available to relevant uh, applications on the receiver chain. So with this approach, then uh, as we can see, the application developer can build this message passing application and provide a message passing service that's built on top of the base layer of the ZK bridge and this message passing uh, application interface can then be utilized by other applications as well. So, so far we have seen how ZK bridge approach works um, by utilizing succinct proofs to build a truly permissionless and trust-minimized uh, bridge for cross-chain into our communication. So now I also want to briefly talk about how we can even further improve the security of ZK Bridge. So in particular, for example, here, uh, ZK Bridge approach does not rely on any trust of external intermediaries. But however, the ZK bridge, any particular ZK bridge implementation could still have bugs or vulnerabilities, for example, in uh, the circuit implementation and so on. So how can we further improve the security of uh, ZK bridge? So here, uh, again, the base layer of ZK Bridge uh, presents a unified interface uh, for syncing block header from uh, the sender chain to the receiver chain. And now we can actually utilize this unified interface to improve uh, security of the overall bridge with an approach that we call defense in depth. So in particular, in this case, we can combine multiple implementations uh, to leverage proof diversity and version programming so that we can actually combine different uh, implementations uh, that are uh, aimed at uh, implementing this unified interface. And uh, furthermore, even combine, uh, we could even combine ZK bridge with other approaches such as optimistic uh, bridges and so on. And also we can design different policies uh, for combining uh, different uh, uh, bridge implementations. Uh, again, that all adhere to this unified interface for syncing block headers. And different applications in this case could even uh, make their own decisions uh, utilizing different uh, policies for combining these different uh, bridge implementations. So as one example of this approach, one can check out the proposal from Gnosis uh, called Hashi uh, as an EVM header uh, Oracle aggregator. And so with this defense in-depth approach, 
they can uh, one can combine different implementations of zk bridges or even combining different implementations of zk bridge and of snake bridges uh, and other approaches that all implement this unified interface for syncing block headers and as the combined approach in the end provides this defensing depth to enable uh, a more secure implementation of ZK Bridge. For example, one may only accept the latest block header information from the receiver chain if at least two out of three, uh, for example, uh, different ZK Bridge implementations uh, that all provide valid proofs for the latest block header uh, update. So to summarize, uh, ZK Bridge uh, provides a practical approach for building trustless and truly permissionless bridge uh, that rely, uh, rely on minimized trust, efficient on-chain verification, and is um, permissionless and decentralized by design, and is fully extensible and designed to be universal. So again, for more information, you can check out our ZK Bridge paper and, uh, 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 and the research blog on zkbridge.org and uh, the Berkeley IDI research website. So one more thing I wanted to brief mention, uh, briefly mention um, is that the ZK Bridge technology essentially can enable other related capabilities. So one concept that is called a state proof is essentially a cryptographic proof of state transitions that occur in a given set of blocks um, in a blockchain. So for example, Algorand implements its uh, Algorand state proof uh, using uh, ZKP technologies as well. And essentially, as we can see from the ZK uh, bridge technology, they the proof uh, that's generated by the block header relayers essentially can view that as a state proof uh, as it provides a cryptographic proof of the state changes uh, in the sender chain. And also from what we have seen, uh, we can see that because these proofs generated by the block header relayer in the ZK bridge, they essentially generate these sustain proofs uh, of like client verification, then with the ZK Bridge technology, we automatically get uh, essentially zero knowledge proof based client, uh, like client verification. And with such a ZK based like client ver verification, it can easily support different uh, types of applications and usage scenarios, in particular uh, for, um, for example, for mobile wallets and for uh, clients uh, in certain uh, uh, in certain settings such as in mobile use case uh, as done in Celo's uh, uh, example. And furthermore, we can extend the ZK bridge approach and technology to privacy chains uh, with uh, privacy protection as well. So in our recent uh, ZKP hackathon, there is also a track dedicated to ZK Bridge. We uh, encourage um, uh, uh, we encourage uh, the uh, participants to uh, join uh, the ZKP hackathon and uh, learn more and contribute to the ZK Bridge track. And for more information, you can go to zk-hacking.org. Thank you.